This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the best place to build a beautiful website. Candle tutorial, you know, that's a cool idea, right? I mean, all the other candle tutorials suck on YouTube, so why not just do it better? We're gonna do four step thing. I don't think I can do it with push-ups. So we're gonna change format. Let me ask you a question, are candles spheres? You're, you're supposed to say no. Are they toruses? No, they're, they're cylinders. So clearly start off by making a cylinder. This is the obvious first step. Sculpting workspace, and we want the topology of the cylinder to be more uniformly distributed than what it is. So, you know, you want to do some remeshing, which can get pretty tedious if you hit the remesh button again and again and again. So what I recommend is Shift R to pick your voxel size and then Control R to actually do the remeshing. Now, remember those two hotkeys, because we're going to be doing that all the time. Welcome back, you fucking losers. This step is about taking our cylinder and sculpting it into something that looks like a candle. But CG matter, how are we gonna get from here to stop? It's easy. Clay strips brush, beat up the top of the candle as if some of the wax melted, and then inflate brush to make it puffy around the corners like some of that wax accumulated. Basically, make it look physically accurate. Blub, 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 blub brush. Use the blub brush to add some blubby wax around the candle. You know, it probably helps some rotational symmetry. Use that to make the base. It's much faster. But don't forget that you should probably have more wax in the direction that everything's melting, that's how things would accumulate. It just makes sense. Speaking of melting, you should probably add some drops, you know, where's that wax going? Add some drops with the blood brush. We can have drips here, we can have drips there. By the way, people, carrots, very healthy. Eat them. We now have a model, it looks pretty good, probably, but the issue is that the bottom of it kind of has this concavity to it. We don't want that, so just add in a cube, use some boolean magic to get rid of it. You got a flat base, you can put that on any surface now. Next step. Candles, they usually have wicks, so how are you gonna make your wick, boy? Well, just add a curve, position it where you want, add a bit of depth, so now this thing kind of looks cylindrical, you, you made a wick. You know, sometimes with these tutorials, I feel like I entered this territory where I can talk about absolutely anything. It doesn't even have to have to do with anything with Blender, it just doesn't matter that this format... Yeah, what were we talking about? I think we made the uh, flame of the candle, we just projected that on a plane, but of course this has the issue that when you look at it from the side, it's gonna be infinitely thin. So what do you do? You just kind of cheese it, you just duplicate, rotate it by 90 degrees, this is what all the video games are doing. If you want more precision, just add more copies, you'll fool anybody. Wax material should probably look like wax, so I recommend adding subsurface scattering that's the main trick for doing this maybe a bit of reflectivity does this take forever to render yes but that's the subsurface scattering that that's that's what happens don't you just hate it when your render feels like it's missing something? In this case, I think it's probably the glow of the flame, so what I recommend is enable the emission pass. Go to the compositing workspace and have glare happen for your emission, and then just mix everything together using an additive mode. This way you have control over everything that's going on. Final step, making the candle flame wiggle. You add a wave modifier because that's what makes it wavy, but it lo looks bad to begin with. Why does it look bad? Because you need subdivisions, more geometry means more good waviness. Maybe you want to change some of these parameters so it's not as ridiculous. And then of course we don't want this wiggling everywhere, so maybe make a, a vertex or weight map, whatever it's called, make one of those and then apply to the modifier. And there, there you go, you've done it. Okay, so you made it to the end of my candle tutorial, which was very good, but it can't hold a flame to the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. And Squarespace lets you make a website without any of the coding, without any of the hard stuff. They have very good templates. How good are the templates? Well, good enough for me to use them, because my website, www.cgmatter.com, was built using Squarespace, and it doesn't stop there, because they have features like analytics, so you can track how many people are going to your site, demographic type information. There's also email campaigns, so you can send out your personal message, or brand message, or any message that can be sent over an email and while Squarespace was already affordable I'm about to swing the pot so much that quite frankly you're not going to be able to believe it if you use my link in the description if you go and click that you're going to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain